guys, it's Ariana. Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're going to be reading some more scary stories. As per usual, I have my Wicca candle in here, making the whole room smell like caramel apple. And I am going to be reading my email today. So I will be continuing the apartment story in the next couple of videos. I just am waiting for updates. And I have a bunch of emails that I have saved. I have like 20 emails sitting here from you guys. So I'm very excited to start reading these. So I'm gonna start with probably the oldest one that I have and it's a short one. So there's going to be a bunch of different emails in this video, so it's gonna be a bunch of different stories. Let me know if you guys like more of series and long format of just one story videos better than like a bunch of different stories. But keep in mind, it's harder to find the series because I have to get permission from the authors. But let me know down below what you guys prefer. And if you guys prefer the longer format and just one story per video, then I will try to find that. Let's jump into these emails. When I was five years old, I lived in a 150 year old house. It was pretty scary. And one night I was watching TV in my room and I felt a cold, heavy feeling and I heard footsteps walking down my stairs. I thought it was my mom and I didn't really think much of it, but I didn't see her walk past me from the stairs. So I thought it was kind of strange. Just then I heard someone whisper run in an old scratchy voice. So I noped the fuck out of there and I ran to my mom's room and I slept in there that night. The next morning we found my room completely destroyed and we never found out what it was. That was their entire story. So that's really freaking creepy. Thank you so much for sending me that, but that is so weird. I hate that so much. So this one is a longer story. So a lot of build up to this and it requires a bit of an explanation. So please bear with me. Years ago, some friends of mine, Alex and Tony had told me a story. It was a story involving a train decades prior, somewhere in what I believed was Bucks County, PA. The story went that the train was very new at the time, including a brand new safety feature that would automatically open the doors should an accident happen. However, on one such trip, the safety feature malfunctioned and the train caught fire. The doors locked shut and all of the passengers unfortunately died. Allegedly, since then, people had tried to walk through the railway cars, trying to make it through the train, seeing if they could brave the atmosphere. Very few could make it past the third car though. Over time, the site would be visited by people doing drugs and partying. The site was very well known by avid ghost hunters for being dark and full of negative activity. So we decided to go. Alex, his lifting buddy, two girls Alex was familiar with, and myself. Alex regaled us with horror stories of the train until the girls were incredibly freaked out. On arriving, they stated they weren't gonna go near it. And of course, Alex said he would just stay with them. I promptly called him out for being a dog and that he intended this from the start. I, however, was 20 and in the US Army. I wouldn't be phased by some ridiculous ghost story. Yes, I firmly believe in the paranormal. I just knew my friend was full of shit. The other guy and I made our way towards the train. It was night out by the area surrounding the train was far darker. The very atmosphere seemed heavier from 500 yards away. Here's what I should mention something. I'm an empath. Well, I used to be. I can touch a photo and literally channel the raw energy. Once as a child, I touched a book about the Vietnam War and the veterans. My father was in Vietnam. I was 10 and I burst into tears, feeling everything those people had felt. I went down and told my father and my sister started making fun of me. My dad said that I needed to explain what I felt, the emotions and what it had been like for them coming home. He confirmed that I was almost 100% dead on. My young brain couldn't process everything and I couldn't articulate everything. And that's when I learned that I had a sixth sense. I could channel the emotions of the dead primarily and occasionally a living person. Okay, back to the train. The closer we got to the train, the heavier the air got. I could feel my body getting slower. I was afraid. I just didn't know why. Being in the army, I wasn't really afraid of anything. Not of other people at any rate, and definitely not death, but I was scared. For the first time, flight took over. I had to get the fuck away from there. It was evil, raw, seething evil. I called out to my buddy, I don't think this is a good spot. I don't feel okay, we should turn around. He said that he didn't feel good either. He turned around and walked back to me. Past me, I looked back at the train and without warning, a tidal wave of dark energy struck me in the face. I staggered like I had been hit. Pain, screaming, inhumane pain. Fear, anger, jealousy, seething rage, a mixture of emotions and desires. And above all, a hunger. Whatever this was, it was hungry. It hated life and it wanted to devour it. I turned and I ran, but I couldn't. My legs wouldn't move. 
And as I tried to run, I tried to escape this thing. I felt something like two powerful fists smash down on my shoulders, driving me to the ground. And I couldn't fight back. Then the other guy turned around and when he looked at me, his face drained of all color. He ran back to me, picked me up off the ground and one arm over his shoulder, half dragged me back to the cars. I demanded a cigarette from my friend Alex and I killed half of it in one drag. We told him what happened and that the girls wanted to go see. Then someone from a nearby house started screaming at us and told us that we needed to leave. So we made our exit. That night, as we stayed up talking about what happened, both of us avoided what we had seen. I didn't want to know what he saw, and he wasn't sharing. I already knew what it was. We had encountered a demon, something of pure evil, something that could destroy us. I slammed the door shut in my mind. I locked up my sixth sense behind mental barriers, and I promised myself that I would never channel anyone or anything ever again. 16 years later, that barrier still stands. The train was removed and destroyed, so thank God for that. And that was their entire story. So that one was really interesting. That was very, very, very strange. And I'm not entirely sure what you encountered, but it does sound like it was a very evil presence. So holy crap. I'm glad that the train is gone now though, and that you haven't, I hope, experienced anything like that ever since, because that is so creepy. Holy crap. Okay, the next one that I'm gonna read is an update from somebody that has sent me emails before in the past. And they said, my son has always had really bad dreams, night terrors, nightmares, whatever you wanna call it. This experience took place about three years ago now, when my son was in his bedroom. My son was only three and a half, so I don't know whether this was a dream he had, but due to what he said recently, I have a suspicion that it wasn't a dream. He woke up one night screaming at the top of his lungs, but this was a different type of scream, one that sounded like something was trying to hurt him. I ran into his room and he was wide awake, staring at the end of his bed and crying. Usually he would still be asleep when these happened and he wouldn't wake up. So I knew when it was a night terror, but this wasn't that. I asked him what happened and he said a hand was trying to get him. And he started crying hysterically and kept saying, daddy lost his hand. At this point, I was super freaked out and told him that it was just a dream, but he wouldn't calm down. I took him into my room and I made him a little bed on the couch we have in the corner. Unfortunately, he wouldn't sleep in his own room again until he was five. Now, the reason I believe that he wasn't dreaming is because just a few months ago, he brought up the time he had seen a hand crawling towards him in his room. Just for reference, he is now six. I playfully said, yes, that was a terrible dream and you didn't go back to your own room to sleep for a very long time. He replied with a straight look that said, it wasn't a dream. I asked him if he was sure and he said, yes, I really saw a hand. Ever since he told me that, I question what the fuck he could have seen. A ghost? A demon? Who the hell knows? But it was something that utterly terrifies me that he even remembers something from that long ago when he was that young. So it must have been pretty traumatic. Another thing that happened over the summer last year, I was watching a video about haunted stories from another YouTuber sitting on my chair in the living room. About 30 seconds after the video started to play, a picture frame sitting on a tall shelf nearby fell off and plummeted to the floor. It's a very heavy frame with a metal frame and glass, but it miraculously didn't shatter. The shelf is about seven feet off the ground. Now the scary part of all is that the only picture we have on that shelf is of my husband's father, who had died a few years ago. I turned off the video and I instantly got out of my house and went for a really long walk because that gave me a super bad vibe. Other strange stuff includes some friends and family talking about how they all feel a presence in my kitchen. I've had three separate people who are all from three different areas who have come to visit and not related in any way tell me the exact same thing about how uncomfortable they felt near the kitchen and dining room since that area is where the basement door is and where strange things mostly happen. I'm not surprised. Another few notable things about that house is that sometimes trash can lids fly off of the cans, strange noises from downstairs and appliances and windows in the kitchen keep on breaking. Just last week, another window shattered in the kitchen and we can't figure out why it keeps breaking. I was told it was due to improper insulation, but I feel like it might be a bit more than that. Thanks for reading and if anything else happens, I'll be sure to let you know. So they haven't updated me since, but all of that is really creepy. I'm so sorry that your son has been dealing with night terrors. That sounds so terrible. But also the fact that you think that that wasn't a night terror that he experienced when he was three, that is so scary. Oh my God, I can't imagine seeing a hand in the dark. That just creeps me the fuck out. I hate that so much. Oh my God. 
Okay, so I'm gonna read one more story. I think I'm gonna go over to my Instagram because I do have some that are sitting in my requests, I believe. Hi, Ariana, this happened in the 1980s when I was 21 years old. My uncle set me up with his girlfriend's niece, who was 23 at the time and had just moved into her uncle's house. Her name was Angela and she was different than most of the girls I would usually date. She was into Satanism and the occult. So we hit it off the moment we met. After a couple of weeks, I started staying with her and having a great time. Every weekend was a party, which meant a lot of people would be at her house. She had this black cat named Diablo. The cat would never go upstairs, just sit and look at the top of the stairs. And I thought it was really strange. So one night I decided to take the cat upstairs, but before I got to the upstairs, it ripped my arms to shreds. So after that, I left the cat alone, laugh out loud. Every night the cat would look up at the stairs and not move from one spot. And one night we were in bed, it was around 1 a.m. I heard the bedroom door open and it woke me up. I noticed an older, short man walk into the bedroom. She always had her family coming over at all hours of the night, so I didn't really think much of it. But I had this weird feeling, and when he walked out, I woke her up and told her about the man walking into the room. She just laughed and told me it was her uncle and go back to sleep. So I went back to sleep, not thinking about it again for a few days. She wanted to show me a family photo a couple days later, and as we were looking at the pictures, I noticed a picture of a man laying in a casket, but I'd seen him before. I told her that that was the guy that came into the room, and she looked at me with a grin and said, I need to tell you something. This house belonged to her uncle a couple years ago before we met, and he died at the top of the stairs, and the cat would always sit and stare at the top of the stairs. She said the house was haunted and her uncle's ghost would go into her room from time to time to check on her and said, okay, let's get a Ouija board and find out. But we never actually did it. The anniversary of her uncle's death, her cat got into a fight with something downstairs. We went downstairs to find out what was going on and the cat actually was dead. We never found out what the cat was fighting or what happened. Every time I would go over to her house, I got this weird feeling. But once we broke up and I stopped going over, I started to get nightmares that the house was evil. That's the only way to describe it. And that's how they ended the story. Oh my God. So I'm so sorry that they lost their cat to like some invisible force in their house. So that reminds me of like paranormal activity when like the dog gets hurt in, I think it's like the third or fourth movie. I don't remember what movie it was, but I remember really, really disliking that part of the movie. It was just so not necessary to include that in the movie. And I'm sorry if that story traumatized you because it kind of traumatized me to read that. So. That was a really scary story. I don't like the idea that her uncle is literally coming into the room to check on you. What if you guys weren't dressed? What if you guys were doing something weird and the uncle just like decided to come in? That's just creepy. Ghosts are weird. People being in your house and not being able to see them is just fucking weird. Cause what if you're doing something and they just walk into your room? That's so fucking creepy. I hate that. Oh my God. But this is where I'm going to end the video because we are already at the 18 minute mark. So I need to edit this and post it. So I hope you guys are enjoying 31 days straight of uploads for 31 days of Halloween. I know this is a shorter video than my last video. My last video was literally like 30 minutes, but it took forever to edit. And I know you guys want me to post longer videos, but oh my God, guys, it is so much work to get ready, film, and then edit it immediately and then post it. It's a lot of work and it takes a lot of hours. So please bear with me. I know you guys want longer videos, but it's very hard to create longer videos, especially when I'm filming in 4K on this camera because my camera overheats. So 20 to 25 is usually the mark that I try to go to for videos, but a lot of the times I can't find long enough stories to make videos quite that long. So if you guys have any stories that you guys wanna share with me that you want me to read on the channel, feel free to message me on Instagram or feel free to message my email. I am getting to my email as you guys saw in this video. So please feel free to message me any of your guys' longer stories over email and I will definitely read them as long as they are coherent and make sense and I can understand what's going on. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys did make it to the end of the video, leave me your favorite animal emoji down below. Mine is dog, so. If you guys wanna leave a puppy dog down below, that would make me so happy. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys at the next video. Bye.